I think the, the best phase three data supporting the use of a BTK inhibitor in a patient with deletion 17P really comes from the Resonate study. And this is a randomized clinical trial enrolling patients with relapsed or refractory CLL where patients were either treated with a brutinib 420 milligrams once daily until progression or a typical 20 week, 24 week course of ofatumumab, uh, an anti-CD20 antibody. This, um, importantly, this, uh, the patient population enrolled to this study, a third of patients had deletion of 17P, and interestingly, about half of the patients had a mutation uh, uh, in the TP53 gene. So it really was a, a group of patients that were enriched for um, high risk factors, those having um, TP53 dysfunction. With this in mind, um, abrutinib provided a statistically um, uh, superior progression-free survival compared to ofatumumab. And in the, um, the, 18, uh, the recently presented 18-month uh, follow-up data, we saw a PFS for abrutinib of about uh, 76% compared to about 8% for ofatumumab. In addition, we saw an overall survival benefit in this patient population. Uh, really suggesting the benefit to a brutinib in patients with high risk, uh, poor risk factors. Um, I think it's important to measure, uh, to mention two other data sets. Uh, these are phase two studies, so single arm, single arm investigations where um, patients were treated with um, a brutinib, but these two studies really focused on patients with deletion 17P. And one was a multi-center study, um, only enrolling in patients with deletion 17P, referred to as the Resonate 17 study. And the second data set uh, comes from the NIH led by uh, Adrian Wiesner. And those studies together really taught us that um, abrutinib can work exceptionally well in patients with deletion 17P. And at about one year of follow-up, we see the progression-free survival of about 80%. So when you compare this to historical results using chemo immunotherapy, where we see a duration of response in less than a year, only a few months in some cases, to see 80% of patients progression-free of uh, at one year really looks like an improvement.